The U.S. missionaries facing trial in uh, Haiti are, are for trying to uh, load a busload of children and take them out of Haiti should be released from jail soon. That's uh, while the investigation continues. That's what the Haitian judge is saying, and he said that on Thursday. Some of the children have parents who are living. Some do not. There's been a lot of confusion about the proper paperwork. It's been a political ping-pong game. Pastor Clint Henry of Central Valley Baptist Church in Meridian, Ohio, excuse me, Idaho, says they are praying for their safe return. So a question to our panel, what are your thoughts on this story? And did this missionary group perhaps overstep its bounds and move too quickly for the Haitian government? John, we'll start with you. Yeah, I, these seem to be, uh, I, I don't know the background of the individuals or that church or anything, but just at, at first like blush or any, whatever you want to call it, first impression is that they're well-intended people who uh, wanted to do something well, maybe uh, good, uh, got steered in the wrong direction, and... Uh, you know, did overstep their bounds. Uh, it's um, it, it, hopefully it will get resolved uh, in the right spirit. Uh, it, they may have violated the letter of the Haitian law, but uh, I think in spirit they were trying to do the right thing. I, mean, I, I think I agree with John on this that uh, Haiti is an absolute mess, and uh, we all know that. And uh, there is little government and structure there. Uh, and there's been enormous corruption in Haiti, as we know, for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot of corruption in Haiti. Uh, we, we've had somebody in our own parish that's just gotten one of a, a child uh, two weeks ago, uh, uh, finally got out of Haiti and has adopted that child. And just go walking through them over the last 18 months has been enormous amount of money uh, <clears throat> and a presidential pardon for $10,000. Oh, that's a little graph there. Uh, and so I, I think you're walking into a situation a little naively, well-intentioned, you know, we want to do something, but in the midst of all those chaos, uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of government saying, you know, if people want all these children, we want some money. Uh, and, and there's just no rules of the trade. And I think they probably should have been a little more well-prepared going into this situation so that they wouldn't be stepping on all of those kind of things. But I think rules. both sides have made some mistakes here and hopefully can be resolved. I, th I think there are rules. I, I, I do. Um, I don't for a moment doubt that that um, there's um, bakshish, is the word, the graft, graft and, corruption. thank you, graft and, and bribery and things like that going on as well. I, I mm -hmm. don't deny that at all. Um, and, and I don't mean to imply that that's part of the rules. But it took 18 months to get a baby out, and it takes however long to get a baby from, from China or from um, one of the South American countries, Colombia or something. Um, I, I agree. This, I mean, the woman who heads up this committee had, was starting by building an orphanage in Costa Rica. So I do believe that she's trying to do good. Of course, I believe everybody's trying to do good. I, but I, I think that um, there seems to be evidence, and of course, you know, we need to find out what we're talking about before we talk about it, but that never stops us. <laughs> but I would like to encourage people to wait for facts to find out. It seems at this point that most of the members of that group assumed or were told that things were being done, you know, according to Hoyle, legally and with the um, stamp of approval of the Haitian government. And that clearly wasn't true. The real question in my mind is that there are those who say she was told that and she was doing this anyway. And that over 30 of those children, see the people in the group apparently were told that they were all without parents or near close relatives. And, and over 30, the parents gave up the children and said, we can't clothe and feed and educate them. You take them to America and do that. That's not the same thing. So, I mean, we still but have to find the Wasn't the complication on this, too, that part of it is the Haitian and the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. right? They were taken, sure. and, and there's right. all kinds of tensions there. So Boy, that's another little issues. Yep. whole yep. issue on part yep. of it. Well, if I may just quickly weigh in, I have a couple of things. I didn't know that it was a Baptist church, so I have to applaud Baptists for getting into the fray. <laughs> I mean, typically when you see things like this, and usually it's a, a, a marginalized sect oftentimes, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm glad that, that the uh, Central Valley Baptist Church is involved. I don't know if it's Southern Baptist or American Baptist, but, but uh, hooray for the Baptist at least trying to do something. <laughs> so I applaud her for that. <clears throat> um, in terms of their motive, I, I think that uh, my impression is that their, their motives appeared to be noble and commendable. Uh, now, we all know that there's a wrong way to do right, but there's never a right way to do wrong. So uh, they probably went about doing the right thing the wrong way. 
So that appears to be, be the impression for me. I think that, uh, of course, desperate times uh, uh, sometimes uh, justify desperate measures. And the zeal to respond uh, to the need of these uh, uh, children in desperate situations, they, you know, overstepped their bounds clearly and, and uh, came into conflict with the laws of the land that still was not in place at that time. So without laws operating, really, it would be anarchy. Uh, I've always had, and this nation probably has not been educated enough about Haiti, this nation really owes a debt to some degree to the nation of Haiti. If it had not been for the revolutions of Haiti back in the uh, early uh, 1800s, we wouldn't have half of America. Uh, we wouldn't have had Louisiana, arguably wouldn't have the uh, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans Saints, the <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl, so all of that, you know, has a trace of, uh, you can trace it back to Haiti's revolution that, that simply would not have happened had that not taken place. So we owe some, some, uh, you know, debt of gratitude to Haiti for defeating the French and moving them out of this region. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm applauded to see the church stepping up in, in the Catholic Church and all the various church bodies rising up uh, there and, and their acts of benevolence. I think, uh, you know, uh, Haiti oftentimes get a rap of being a voodoo, uh, a demonized nation, but, but the, the churches appear to be the stars of the show uh, in their uh, display of benevolence trying to go in and make a difference there. Okay. I just wanted well, to say uh, that it's not just the churches, but mm -hmm. the synagogues. Right. I mean, yeah. the, just the reform movement in Reform yeah. Judaism yeah. sent over a million dollars already, right. so right. I was very impressed. It takes everybody to... Mm -hmm. to, to just had to wrap right. up. My concern yeah. is, um, I don't disagree with anything that's been said. There's another side, I think, though, and that is the, the trauma of the situation. Uh, when, when you're going to take children away, and, and uh, are, are people really in a frame of mind to make wise decisions about giving up their children right. to be taken somewhere else to another country? Uh, maybe they've been dealing with this. Now, there's slave trade. It has a technical term down there. I've forgotten what it is. But uh, children who are given off to other families and then become, in effect, their slaves. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that may have been some of the misunderstanding about who, who was free to be given away, who was not. But you know, I just think Baptist people, Christian people, Jewish people all need to have a sensitivity uh, and not just go in and just say we're going to take, we're, gonna, we're seizing this moment, we're going to take care of things, we've got the solution. Well, maybe, maybe not. Certainly, uh, children need the, the opportunities to grow up well, to be educated, to have proper living conditions, and no doubt they stand a better chance in other places than Haiti at the moment. But. I just think uh, pushing that agenda too far, I think, is what's happened. It's very American. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So is Haiti a hopeless situation? I mean, so oh. much aid is piling in. And oh. The We Are the World video debuts tonight in the Olympics. That's another Haitian relief effort. Is it a hopeless situation? Or no. is, there, is there some room there? No, there's room. It's never hopeless. I, was yeah. say, I, I think it's going to be a long term. Yeah. I mean, no. it's not going to be solved. We Americans like to solve things in one month, two months, six months. Mm -hmm. I mean, Haiti's, I mean, like Katrina, is still five right. years going out. Haiti is going to be 50 and years going out. And Haiti, before the earthquake, before the earthquake right. was, you know, the poorest country in well, the, the Western, Western Hemisphere, Hemisphere, and it was, you know, had all kinds of problems. So it, your, your Katrina example is very good. You pour all that money in, and it still is not a quick fix. But, I mean, theoretically, New Orleans was, you know, functioning adequately and, <laughs> and on, a level, on a level that, you know, a la vai, Haiti should get to that level. And, and I think, you know, the celebrity uh, involvement will fall away, but those who have been involved before the earthquake will continue mm -hmm. to be involved after and, and uh, providing hope. So what about taking children, whether they've been given, you know, permission by their parents, and there's that question of whether some had parents and some don't. The cultural differences, taking a Haitian child to a culture like ours, how does that work? I mean, is that possible? Is that something that we should be doing? Well, I don't know. You know, ask Angelina Jolie, and uh, I mean, she, I'm sure she's she could probably share some light on, mm -hmm. on on how uh, that could work or not work. But uh, I think it uh, I think it is problematic in that sense. Uh, I think, uh, but again, you know, if 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 love is the motive and, and to 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 benefit these children, then you should want to do what is best for the children uh, all the way around. And uh, and laws are in place in countries to protect the people, even though they are imperfect laws. We have imperfect laws here, but still they're designed to create a sense of civility in that, in that country. Or, or in a sense, not, not an exact uh, parallel, but uh, ask uh, President Obama if, uh, if being in, in different cultural settings uh, is valuable. Apparently it hadn't hurt him too much. But John, still you being have with the immediate last family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. We I have see. to wrap it up. It was a great discussion today. I'd like to thank our panelists, Joe Grappis, Greg Yearwood, John Slider, Galia Rooks, Clay Calloway, and... 
Please join us again next week for more Old Side of the News. We wish you a happy Valentine's Day.